It seems that Oakland businesses are now collapsing. Same thing with San Francisco, same thing with LA, and basically all of California. This is what it looks like. And this is just a few months ago. Over 200 businesses close up shop for strike over rampant Oakland crime. Now, when I talk about Oakland crime, we're not talking about like the petty theft here and there. We're talking about organized crime here, right? You got people smashing vehicles into people's shops at night, taking everything. Whole entire stores looted. And I haven't met a single business that hasn't faced some sort of shoplifting or crime in their establishment. And we're not talking about one, two, three stores closing down to protest. 200 stores. This isn't like a small operation. Do you know how big is it for 200 businesses to close for a single day just to go on strike because the crime is so bad? That's a lot of businesses. And did Oakland do anything? Absolutely not. Because now, frustrated Oakland business owners are like, you know what? We're paying sky high taxes to operate in this city. And this city is giving us zero amenities. I mean, if you're paying this high taxes, the city better be giving you guys like amazing infrastructure, very low crime, constant police patrols, and all that good stuff. But you pay that sunshine tax every single day. And what do you get? High shoplifting. Police doesn't care. City doesn't care. Oh, your store got looted for the third time this week? Guess it's on you. Call the insurance company. And this is why Oakland businesses are so frustrated. You know how frustrated they gotta be to risk their businesses and to stop paying taxes? You know, business owners just wanna do business. They just wanna do good, healthy business and then pay their taxes and call the day. They don't want to be dealing with this on a constant basis because some of these guys are getting lawyers to help them to stop pay taxes because of how bad the shoplifting is getting. And it's getting to the point where San Francisco and Oakland and other California cities just don't care anymore. Oh, crime is so high that every single storefront here is closed and empty? Well, let's just turn them into massive homeless shelters. And that's kind of like the city's voice. You know, you would believe that, okay, maybe you have a bunch of store closures, a bunch of retail stores being broken in, and now they're out of business. Maybe it's time to fix the crime. Spend a few billion dollars combating crime, give businesses incentives, and maybe establish some good pro-business laws and put criminals account for their actions. But instead, they're like, you know what? I see some empty storefronts. Let's make it into a homeless shelter. So this is why a lot of people in California right now are really frustrated with the current government and state council, right? There just seems to be a very, very low amount of care. There's no care anymore for a lot of these businesses, and they're falling, and they're crumbling. You know, who are these cities going to be taxing next if the local businesses are gone? Because we're seeing record vacancies in many of these California cities. And the Golden State has lost its shine. A lot of rich people have gone. In fact, in 2023, California's population dipped below 39 million, the lowest count since 2015. The state lost 75,000 people. But it's not about how many people, but who is leaving. Most of the people leaving California, they make a lot of money. Easy six figs. We're talking about $300,000, dollars $500,000. Well-educated workers, like people with master's degrees and also doctorates, and a lot of businessmen. Businessmen just want to leave. You're paying sky high taxes and what do you get? High crime, high shoplifting, high vacancies. No wonder a bunch of these California citizens are moving to Texas. They're moving to Nevada. Low taxes, pro-business laws, and you don't see this sort of rampant theft. And if you also go into San Francisco, this is what it looks like. Okay, you can watch this whole video yourself, but it's just 14 seconds long. And this is, I think, Market Street because you see like the rail lines on the roads. I think they're pretty close to like the Westfield Mall. And you do see like a family just literally having to navigate through streets and crowds of people. I mean, families no longer feel safe because there's just a bunch of open drug use, people passed out on the floor, people high on drugs, people dealing drugs, people robbing, you know, a lot of shoplifting. You know, there's feces on the ground, there's urine on the ground. This is supposed to be a first class tech city, but it's basically some sort of a third world country. In fact, People in the comment section say third world countries aren't even like this. This used to be concentrated in the Tenderloin area, but now it's really spreading out. If you go to little places like little Saigon in Oakland, you see a lot of the same thing, but this time it's organized crime rings. You go to San Francisco, there's also organized crime rings, but you also have a bunch of open air drug use. Okay, you have the Tenderloin right here, 
which is a massive place for drugs, a huge place for people just passed out on the streets. You have homelessness everywhere. It used to just be here, right? But now it's spreading to Lower Knob Hill. It's spreading to the Civic Center. The Mission has whole entire streets completely empty. This is the new San Francisco, guys. And this is really, really freaking people out. And San Francisco proposal will allow lawsuits over grocery store closures. Talk about anti-business. Basically, if you own a grocery store and you're losing money because of shoplifting and your grocery store keeps getting looted, so you close because you don't make money. Okay, end of the story. But apparently San Francisco wants grocery stores to provide six months notice before closing and find another grocery store to take your place. What in the world is going on? And if you don't do it, it will allow the citizens of that neighborhood to sue you. Guys, the grocery store isn't making any more money, okay? Let the owners go with whatever pennies they have left so they can open another store later on at a different neighborhood. But instead, San Francisco would much rather go for the suing routes, which is very, very sad to see this kind of situation. Right now, San Francisco is not the same as before. It used to be this world-class tech city, and now it's becoming like a third world country. But what's really frightening is if you head over towards the San Francisco Oakland Bridge to Oakland, and then you go to this place, this is a huge place. It has a massive Vietnamese population. And guess what? Many of the locals who live in Little Saigon say it reminds them of war times. It's supposed to be a first world tech city, but they're saying it reminds them of a war zone. Constant gun violence. People literally getting mugged in the daylight of the streets. People getting hurt. You have houses being looted and robbed. And it's really, really scared to live in this place. And many locals are actually really frustrated even coming out of massive protests. So you already see numerous protests in a lot of these places, right? People are furious. There's protests. Businesses threaten to not pay taxes. Has this changed anything? No, it's the same thing. In fact, it's getting worse. The really wild part is you go to Oakland and you see these little boats and docks. Even these boats are getting stolen. I mean, Oakland's crime is so bad, there's also a rise of piracy, which people actually loot a lot of these boats, these yachts, and these ships. They steal expensive equipment and then sell it. And some steal the whole entire boat in general. At the current moment, it's not looking great for San Francisco. You know, grocery proposals that make it very anti-business. Businesses fleeing San Francisco because of the open-air drug use and open-air drug markets and homelessness everywhere. It just seems like nothing is really getting fixed in California. Many businessmen are leaving to go to better places. Many businessmen are starting to notice this is no longer the city to be. And I remember back in 2010, 2015, this was like the hotspot for tech. This was like the tech capital of the world, despite its problems, despite still having like the Tenderloin District being an open-air drug market. It wasn't nearly as bad as what it is right now. Let's see what happens to San Francisco. Can it recover? I'm not really sure anymore. It's looking worse and worse by the day.